without hope, there's no chance these are gonna survive. But I have hope. I'm gonna do the best that I can to get in there and recover my babies. Let's go. Let's save my girls. We gotta save my girls, man. Da, 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 da. I grow it, I cook it, and farm to table Broccoli, peppercorn, and basil Zucchini is a staple I never thought I'd see potting mix around colonies in COVID quarantine About to hit the garden up The name's Al Joe, I farm it up I got seeds, I got time Plus I'm hungry, so let's start it up Let's go! Al Joe During a time of such uncertainty and anxiety, it is so important to have a purpose in your daily life. You can take control of your diet, get in touch with your human roots, and create your own solution to food insecurity. Make the best of this quarantine by growing what you eat. It is about that time. The zucchinis are glowing up in so many ways, and they have become giant. Although you don't see any right here, where is it? There's one huge one right there. I do have some yellow squash over here. So let's get straight to it. And I do want another one, a yellow one, for tonight's dinner. And look at that color. It's just gorgeous. Sheesh. What a harvest. Oh my goodness. There's one thing I learned in the garden. It's that although there are successes, there's also a lot of failure. These are all the unpollinated and or dying and rotting zucchini on my green zucchini, but ultimately they did not get pollinated. Overall, it looks like I need to make some adjustments. Sometimes it doesn't work out and you have to come to terms with that. You have to learn and get better with every harvest. You can dice up zucchini, or you can slice it, which is my preferred way to do it. If you cut thicker slices, you'll have a really crunchy bite, but the thinner ones just melt in your mouth. Put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, put those slices on, flip them every now and then, add your own seasonings, it is just perfect. slight bite because of the pepper and the paprika adds just a little bit of flavor not too much where it's overwhelming but there's one more thing i want to add glistens absolutely glistens Most people prefer to pick zucchini when they're small because when they get too big, they lose their flavor. Sure, true, but I wanted to take this plant to its botanical limits. You know, grow one the size that you would see winning an award in a fair. Wow, have I seen some incredible growth from these. I mean, look at how big this thing is. And I'm gonna show you some, and they just continue to get bigger. I mean, how? Look at this bad boy, oh my gosh. I mean, compared to my hand, Look at my finger here, but that's not it. I was looking over here. I was like, oh, there's no production on this side. That stinks. Oh, what is this? Big Bertha. Oh my gosh, this thing is massive. Oh boy, this is like literally the biggest zucchini I've ever seen in my life. You can see some slightly less pollinated ones in the back, but then there's just this giant monster of a zucchini, which could probably feed two families. And I'm gonna get a ruler because this thing is just ridiculously large. And the way I think this was so successful as compared to these, these zucchini, which didn't quite blossom well and aren't looking too good, I might have to cut them and toss them. The difference here was these were pollinated by insects, maybe a bee or two, maybe some flies and ants. But this one, I hand pollinated. And that's been the biggest difference in my production of the zucchini. Taking a paintbrush, going from a male flower, like a thin one like these, going inside when they're the, the 
actual flowers are open in the morning, taking a little bit of pollen off of those first and putting them on those female flowers, which start to look like zucchini. And this is what happens just a few days later. And it really took only a week and a half to get this big, maybe two weeks. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy actually. Holy sh What the f These are my pruners. <laughs> if that isn't ridiculous, then I don't know what is. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very special program. I mean, this is, this is my basil. This is some broccoli, rosemary bush, a cauliflower. Oh my gosh, look at how giant this thing is next to some corn. It's taller than my pepper plants. If that isn't ridiculous, then I don't know what is. This is a normal sized zucchini. Oh, it's beautiful. It's delicious. It's a great harvest. But then you scoff because there's this. <laughs> I mean, look at the difference. It's not even close. This thing is huge, bigger than my head with my fro. This thing is even too big for the 12 inch ruler. Oh my goodness. So I found somehow an 18 inch ruler. Didn't even know these were existing but and wow I would say if it were straight it really might be that size this zucchini is massive three and a half pounds almost 18 inches I don't even know if I could eat this whole thing in a week Jesus I brought a gift to you it is a giant zucchini take it Feed your family, it's actually possible. <sighs> but the good times, well, they don't last forever. All right, <clears throat> taking a look at my squash here. Not looking so good. I mean, as you can see, there's some new growth in the center here, trying to compensate for what was lost in these leaves, which not looking too good. Some are wilting and brown. Others look like they might have something called powdery mildew. You can see it kind of looks like someone just rubbed baby powder on it. This is not a sign of a healthy plant, so I'm worried. On a very, very hot day, I'm sweating here, and I'm also a little bit sad. And the truth be told, it's because my favorite vegetable, or fruit, if we're being technical, the squash, zucchini squash to be specific, it's not looking so good. It's wilting, it's got some kind of bacterial disease, it looks like there's plenty of bugs and pests, and I think it has Fusarium wilt, which may be unrecoverable, but I think we're gonna be able to make a difference here. I wanna give my babies a fighting chance, because this has been my favorite vegetable, because it's given me plenty of zucchini, they've been delicious and consistent, but I have hope. I'm gonna do the best that I can to get in there and recover my babies. Let's go! The amazing thing about plants is that they can recover from most damages, given enough time, but in a state like this, it is time for me to intervene. As a gardener, it's my responsibility. So I'm gonna prune back any dying stems and remove leaves affected by fungus. I'm gonna give this zucchini one last fighting chance. This is a great example of a new leaf that has powdery mildew. It's splotchy and it also is on the, on the stems here too. These are spores and they will spread all across the plant. So this is bad news. This plant has bacterial wilt, or fusarium wilt, and powdery mildew all over it. This is just not good. We are tossing this. Clearly these are not developing the way they should be. The flower's already wilted, which means they're dying. You can see the, the, the vegetable, and this is clearly the female flower. This is not a good look. I admit, my efforts were an ambitious last ditch effort, but I never, not in all two years of gardening, I could have never predicted what happened next. Well, this is not what I expected from my yellow squash. I'm really upset that part of it literally just broke off right over here, right? As I was taking it, it, it looked like it was already rotting or something and it just fell right off as I was going to readjust it. All these new leaves, all these new female flowers that were gonna be zucchinis are just gone now. But that's okay because clearly, this zucchini stem was not doing well anyway and you could see there's a lot of i'm not, I'm not even sure what this is inside it could just be the, the stem rotting or it could be eggs it could be a lot of different things um i don't think it's eggs because i don't really see insects around it trying to protect it but 
anyway, this is not looking good. Wow. And I think just like that, I found out my problem. So I'm coming in here and I see this, right? I'm like, why is this so wet? Ew. Uh, oh my goodness, it's boring. It's boring inside the vine. Oh my gosh, look at that. Holy. Wow. Oh no, they're everywhere. Oh my goodness. Look at it. Ew, he's boring inside there. So this has single-handedly taken down my squash. Nasty as we, as we come in here. Look at this. Ugh. This is infested. Absolutely infested. Yeah, this is just done for. Ah. Man, you hate to see something like this. A zucchini squash with so much resilience through this cleanup, which I hoped would be a cleanup and not a memoriam video, which it's now become. Clearly, it was suffering from something more than just fusarium wilt or bacterial wilt or downy mildew. It was something deeper, literally, actually. <sighs> I gotta be more attentive, clearly. I have to be more preventive. Maybe spray it with neem oil preventively to prevent these kinds of outbreaks, but for now, I think I'm gonna put it to rest, clear out this bed, clear out this box, and then get two more seeds fresh down in here, and then look forward to another great harvest in a couple months. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye to this. You've been good to me. Ah, <sighs> my zucchini had a great run, and what looked like a plethora of different diseases affecting it were ultimately all symptoms of the squash bug, and more notably, vine borer larva. Squash vine borer moths are daytime pollinators that feed on flower nectar. They look kind of pretty, but be careful. They lay their eggs nearby on the underside of leaves and their larva have no mercy. Rest in peace to my zucchini squash. So I'm cleaning up. I found one of them on the run. Look at this bastard. Huge. And that is exactly what killed my zucchini squash. Watch out for these guys. I grow it. I cook it. I'm farm to tape. I'm farm to Cauliflower, okra, eggplant, and basil. Zucchini, that's a staple. I'm about to hit my garden up. The name is Al Joe, yeah, I'll farm it up. I got seeds and I got time in them. Pretty hungry, to be honest, so it started up. Never thought I'd see potting mix and that colonies in COVID quarantine. COVID quarantine, 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 COVID, COVID, COVID quarantine, quarantine, COVID quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Whether for fun, to find peace of mind, or to combat glaring food inequities, it is time to start taking ownership of your food supply. Break free from food insecurity and food apartheid by starting a container garden today. Not tomorrow, not next week. All right, fine, you can start on the weekend. I get it, you're busy with other stuff. But start growing ASAP, ASAP. because you'll never find a hobby as mentally gratifying and stomach filling as gardening is. It takes less than 30 minutes a day and saves lots of cash in the long term. Join me in uplifting yourself, your family, and our community for generations to come.